Hi, I'm Corinne. In this chapter, we'll be looking at the equipment used to make espresso, some safety issues, equipment preparation, and correct coffee storage methods. Let's start with the equipment. The espresso machine heats water and forces it under pressure through the coffee grounds to draw out the coffee's flavours. Commercial espresso machines have a number of groups for brewing coffee. Each group has a keypad which has several buttons for brewing different quantities of coffee. A group head which pushes water via a dispersion screen through the coffee and a group handle which holds the ground coffee. The machine has two steam wands for steaming milk, a hot water tap, an on off switch and two gauges. One indicates the pressure of the pump and the other indicates the steam pressure in the boiler. The espresso grinder is another critical part of preparing espresso coffee. On top of the grinder is the bean hopper, which holds a kilo of coffee. The coffee then passes between a set of burrs, which are like teeth for even cutting of the coffee. The coffee then drops into the dosing chamber, which portions the coffee into even amounts. These portions of coffee can be dropped into the group handle by clicking the dosing lever. When the grinder is turned on, it will automatically grind coffee until the dosing chamber fills to the top, where a switch will stop the grinder until the level drops down again. Other equipment you will be using includes a tamp for packing the coffee into the filter basket, shot glasses for calibrating and maintaining product quality, a small set of scales for weighing coffee, milk steaming thermometers, a bar spoon for mixing ingredients, a spatula for pouring steamed milk, a towel for cleaning the filter basket, cleaning cloths for general cleaning with a separate colour cloth for the cleaning of the steam wands, a brush for keeping the area around the grinder clean, and a digital timer for counting the extraction time. Working with espresso equipment has a few hazards that you need to be aware of. The steam wands, hot water tap, group handles and group heads are very hot when the machine is turned on and can give you a nasty burn if touched. Handling of hot liquids, particularly black coffee or tea, may result in burns to both you and your customers if spill. The espresso machine has a number of sharp metal edges, including the edge of the drip tray, and filter baskets when being removed for cleaning. As with working in any area of the store, you should be aware of other hazards, such as slippery surfaces, personal posture, and electrical hazards. Before serving customers, you will need to prepare your equipment and stock for the day. Turn the espresso machine on and allow the heat and pressure to build until the boiler pressure gauge is sitting between 1 and 1.5 bars. Release the build-up of condensation from the steam wands into a cloth and run the hot water tap for about 10 seconds to refresh the water in the lines. Fill the grinder with fresh beans and grind a small portion. Run three shots of espresso through each group to season the espresso machine. This allows for the coffee oils to coat the filter basket and allows you to check your extraction. Before the store opens, you will also need to prepare a bucket of sanitizer for cleaning cloths, fill a container of ice and water for storage of stirring spoons and spatulas, receive milk order and rotate older stock to maintain freshness. Prepare whipped cream for the day's use. Check other ingredients that are available, such as flavour syrups, chocolate powders, tea bags, marshmallows and toppings. Fill the condiment station with lids, spoons, straws, napkins, sugars and sweeteners. Calibrate your milk steaming thermometers by filling a container with hot water and leaving the thermometers until the temperature stops rising. Using a digital thermometer, Measure the temperature of the water and adjust the thermometers with pliers until the correct reading is achieved.
Coffee is a fresh product, like bread or cheese, so correct storage is crucial. The fresh flavours of coffee are affected by air, light, moisture and extreme temperatures. That's why we package our coffees in opaque packaging, sealed from air or moisture. A one-way valve allows the gases released by coffee after roasting to escape without allowing air in, which stales the coffee's fresh flavours. When you receive an order of coffee, make sure the older stock is rotated to the front. Once the bag of coffee has been opened, the coffee is exposed to the air and must be used quickly, within 14 days of opening. Nothing causes coffee to stale more quickly than grinding it up. The increased surface area allows air to oxidise the coffee's flavours and aromas rapidly. It's a bit like the way an apple turns brown after you slice it up. Make sure that the ground coffee is used immediately and that any leftover coffee grounds are completely emptied from the grinder at the end of the day. And any beans left in the grinder's hopper should be stored in an airtight container for the next day's use. Hi, I'm Ben. Before we get into the skills of making coffee, it's good to have a look at what it is, where it comes from, and some of the differences between the many varieties of coffee available. The story of coffee begins in Ethiopia. where the coffee tree was first cultivated around 575 AD. Today, coffee is grown throughout the world and has become the world's second most traded commodity after oil. Two species of coffee are grown commercially. Robusta, which like its name is a hardier plant that grows fast and produces a lot of fruit. However, it often produces a coffee with a robust, harsh flavour. Arabica coffee is slower growing and typically grown at high altitudes, making it more expensive to access and harvest. However, Arabica coffees usually possess sweeter, smoother flavours. What we call a coffee bean is actually the seed of a fruit, the coffee cherry. The coffee cherry ripens on the tree to a plum red colour before being picked. Each coffee cherry usually contains two beans, which are processed, and dried before being shipped as the green beans that we receive in our warehouse. Coffee cherries can be processed by either the wet method or the dry method. Coffee cherries processed by the wet method are pulped and washed to remove the outside layers and then dried for sorting and grading. Coffee cherries processed by the dry method are spread out over a large flat area to dry under the hot sun. The cherries are continually raked to ensure that they dry evenly. Wet processing typically produces coffee with a cleaner, brighter flavour, while dry processing often produces flavours similar to those found in sun-dried fruits, intense, sweet, earthy flavours. It's not just processing that influences the coffee's flavour. Many other factors, such as climate, soil type, rainfall and picking, will have a bearing on how the coffee turns out. From the growing countries, Green coffee is shipped in hessian sacks, like this one, to our warehouse here in Sydney. Green coffee is stable, like grain, and can be stored for several years. Once the coffee is roasted, however, it's a different story. Roasting is one of the critical moments in the overall journey of coffee from seed to cup. The roaster can emphasise lighter, sweeter flavours, or heavier, smoky flavours through adjusting the temperature, airflow and time the coffee is roasted. At a temperature of around 200 degrees Celsius, a batch of green coffee is dropped into the rotating roasting drum. As the roast progresses, the coffee beans expand in size, become darker in colour and start to crackle, like popcorn. The beans continue to darken as the cell walls of the coffee beans break, releasing the oils and sugars slowly to the surface of the bean. When the roast is complete, the hot coffee beans are quickly cooled to stop any further roasting in their own heat. From here, the coffee is quickly packaged to preserve these volatile flavours and aromas. Coffees from different countries and regions can be blended together to create unique flavour combinations. 
The Gloria Jean Special Espresso Blend is used to create all of our espresso drinks in store. It's a combination of two South American coffees. One gives the blend an earthy, solid base, while the second provides chocolatey, nutty flavours. The blend is completed with an Indonesian coffee, which brings some lively, acidic flavours. One of the most important factors in making great coffee is getting the grind right. The perfect grind will produce a shot that oozes into the cup with a thick, luscious crema, the telltale sign of a good extraction. If the coffee is ground coarsely, the water will rush through the grounds too quickly, giving a weak and watery espresso. This is known as under-extracted espresso. If the coffee is ground too fine, the water will struggle to pass through the coffee grounds, resulting in a bitter, burnt espresso we call over-extracted espresso. The best way to find the correct grind is by timing the pour. The time from when the espresso first comes out of the spouts until the pump shuts off should fall between 23 and 27 seconds. If the extraction is less than 23 seconds, then the grind is too coarse and you'll need to make it finer. If the extraction is longer than 27 seconds, then the grind is too fine and you'll need to make it coarser. This adjustment is made by turning the collar on the grinder. First you will need to unlock the collar with this screw. Then the collar can be moved towards coarse or fine. Keep the adjustments you make small. One increment can change the pour time by two to three seconds. Once the collar is locked back in place, grind a couple of grams of the new setting and empty any remaining coffee from the grinder. Grind some fresh coffee to test the new setting. Use this step-by-step -step process until the correct pour time is achieved. It's important to note that coffee is affected throughout the day by environmental factors such as heat, air, light and moisture. These will affect the way the coffee flows and means that you'll need to monitor and adjust the grind throughout the day to maintain consistently great espresso. And when the coffee is pouring just right, it's a beautiful thing. Throughout the years, there have been many advances in the technology and science of brewing coffee, but the best espresso is still made in the hands of a barista who understands the subtle factors that influence the coffee's flavour. In this section, we will look at the techniques of dosing and tamping to extract the best the coffee has to offer. Dosing, or measuring the correct portion of coffee into the group handle, is often overlooked as the cause of poor tasting espresso. Ensuring that you have the correct portion of coffee in the group handle is simple. You can look at the end result, the biscuit. If you don't have enough coffee in the group handle, the used coffee biscuit will be wet and sloppy. The pressurised water has managed to find an easy path through the coffee and gush through, robbing us of the many coffee flavours the coffee has to offer. When the dose of coffee is correct, the coffee will press up against the shower screen on the group head forcing the water to work its way through the coffee evenly, drawing out the full flavour of the coffee. When this happens, the biscuit will be firm and dry. When dosing manually, grind only the amount of coffee you will need to fill one double filter. Around 10 seconds should be okay. Click the dosing lever several times until you create a small mound above the lip of the filter using a sweeping motion to completely fill the group handle and swipe any excess coffee back into the dosing chamber. This technique is often used when you need to make adjustments to the grind and want to avoid excessive coffee waste and also during quiet periods where a full chamber of ground coffee will go stale. When the front chamber on the grinder is more than half full of ground coffee, it will give an even dose per click of the dosing lever. To fill a double group handle, click the lever twice. This method is best used in high volume situations where the ground coffee will be used more quickly.
Tapping the coffee prior to brewing creates an even and level surface, allowing the water to disperse through the coffee, collecting all the essential coffee flavours. By adjusting the pressure of the tamp, you can speed up or slow down the pour to temporarily correct the pour time if it's not quite right. Start by holding the tamp like the handle on a bike and put your thumb on the base. Press lightly into the group handle to level the coffee. Using the small end of the tamp, tap the side of the group handle to collect any loose grounds from the upper rim. Tamp down firmly, making sure that your arm and wrist are in a straight line above the group handle. Using your fingertips, not your wrist, give the tamp a soft twist to polish the surface. Clean any grind off the rim of the basket using the palm of your hand. Run a short burst of water through the group to clear out any dirty water from the previous coffee and stabilise the water temperature for brewing. Lock in the group handle, set up your timer and press the correct button straight away. This prevents the coffee from burning in the group head. Let's go through that process again, more quickly this time. Knock out the biscuit. It looks firm and dry. Clean and dry the group handle using a towel. Dose the coffee. Tamp lightly to level. Tap. Tamp firmly. Twist. Clean the lip. Flush the head. And brew. Ensuring that your equipment is performing at its peak will also play a part in achieving a consistent quality of espresso. The boiler of an espresso machine is a sealed tank of water, heated by an element to create pressure and steam, a bit like a sealed up kettle. The boiler should stay one half to two thirds full of water. When water is drawn out of the boiler, the pump will turn on and fill the tank with fresh water. A dial on the front of the machine displays the steam pressure in the boiler. This should read between one and 1.5 bars. A second dial displays the pressure of the water pump. When a shot of coffee is being extracted, this should rise between eight and nine bars. Regular servicing and cleaning is the best way to keep the espresso machine running at its peak performance. Working as a professional barista means that you need to assess the quality of espresso that you're serving to customers throughout the day. This enables you to respond to environmental changes and fix any fluctuations in quality before they get to your customer. There are four signs of a good espresso. Crema is the heavy foam on espresso. It should be thick, aromatic and persistent. If the crema is light in colour or disappears quickly, this can be a sign of under-extracted espresso. Dark streaks can signal an over-extracted espresso. The pour of espresso should resemble honey dripping from the back of a spoon. If the pour is too fast, like a waterfall, then the coffee will be under extracted. If the pour is dripping very slowly, then the coffee will be over extracted. The time to brew 30 mils of espresso should take between 25 or fall within 23 to 27 seconds. The used coffee biscuit should be firm and dry. This indicates you have the correct quantity of coffee in the group handle. Taste is the fifth sign of a good extraction. Unfortunately, we can't taste every coffee we make, but tasting coffees throughout the day is an excellent way of ensuring quality and consistency. A well-extracted espresso will have a good balance of sweetness and acidity, and it will have a great body. Combining rich, full-flavoured espresso with velvety sweet steam milk is truly a beautiful combination. Using the correct technique when steaming milk can produce a texture that will marry with the espresso, providing the best balance of flavour and great visual appeal. Like coffee, milk is a fresh product and must be steamed to order. Preheating or reheating milk will deteriorate the taste and texture of the milk. You will need to stock several milk varieties to suit customer preferences. These typically include full cream milk, skim milk and soy milk. It's also important to have clearly labelled jugs for each of these. Milk steaming jugs are available in several sizes, depending on the quantity of milk to be steamed. Before you begin steaming, 
release built up condensation from the steaming wand into a sanitised cloth. Pour some fresh cold milk into a steaming pitcher. Use only what you need for each order. Insert the tip of the steaming wand into the milk just below the surface and slightly off centre. This will create a whirlpool within the jug. Turn the steam valve on and gently bring the tip of the steaming wand to the surface of the milk. When you've got the right spot, you'll hear a gentle kissing sound. As the milk expands, you will need to slowly lower the jug to keep the tip of the steaming wand at the surface. When the jug becomes warm, at around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, submerge the tip of the wand to stop the kissing noise and allow the milk to whirlpool. When the thermometer reaches between 130 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, turn the steam off. The thermometer will keep rising and should finish between 150 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. 150 is ideal. Some customers may ask you for their coffee hotter than usual. In this case, aim for 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Or they may ask for their coffee cooler. In this case, aim for 140 degrees Fahrenheit. 120 degrees is an appropriate temperature for children. Remove the jug from the steam wand and wipe immediately with the blue cloth. Move the steam wand away from yourself and release a short burst of steam to purge any milk from the wand. Swirl the milk within the jug to stop it from separating. Make sure you pour the milk quickly after steaming. Ideally, the milk and espresso are ready at the same time so that neither has time to deteriorate. As you can see, this milk has a creamy, buttery texture and a glassy finish, perfect for cappuccino. To prepare milk with a thinner texture, suitable for lattes or flat whites, simply shorten the kissing time. This will limit the amount of air being injected into the milk and will give a denser, flatter finish. When preparing two coffees from the same jug, pour the lighter coffees, like cappuccinos, first, and pour the heavier coffees, like lattes and flat whites, second. The weight of the coffees being served is important as it tells us how much milk and milk foam is actually in the cup. If a coffee is too light, it will have too much foam and not enough milk. As a result, the coffee will be too strong and the texture too airy. If the coffee is too heavy, then too much milk is in the cup, resulting in a weaker coffee taste and thinner mouthfeel. Use the small drink scales and reference sheet to test your coffees. Getting the right coffee in the right time is your customer's number one priority. And while this may sound simple, juggling multiple orders while talking to customers and keeping your area clean takes practice and will require you to work as a team. Depending on how busy the store is, you may be working on the espresso machine by yourself or as part of a team of two or three baristas. Either way, your goal is to serve customers in two minutes, from when they order to when they pick up their coffee. Let's go through the basic range of coffees you'll be preparing in store. Short black. This is simply pure espresso, straight up. Use a warm demitasse or pedestal cup. Our standard short black is a double, which is two, 30 ml shots brewed straight into the cup. A ristretto shot is the first 15 ml only and has a stronger, sweeter taste. Macchiato. In Italian, macchiato means marked or stained. To prepare a macchiato, begin with a short black and mark with some milk and milk foam. Serve in a warm demitasse or pedestal cup. Most of our hot drinks are available in three sizes. Small, which is around the size of a traditional cup. Regular, which is equivalent to a mug. And large, which is a large mug size. For the milk-based coffees, use one shot of espresso for a small, two shots for a regular, and three shots for a large. Cappuccino. Pour thick, creamy milk over the espresso to create a slight dome on top. Pouring down the side of the cup will give a white cap with a marking of espresso. 
the foam should be about two to two and a half centimetres deep. Cafe latte. Pour thinner, creamy steamed milk over the espresso up to the lip of the cup. This time, the foam should be about one centimetre deep. Pour down the middle of the cup to mix the dark colour of the crema with the light colour of the steamed milk. Flat white. Using a spatula, restrict the milk foam from entering the cup, resulting in a thin layer of milk foam. Café Mocha. Mix espresso with chocolate powder and stir together. Add latte style steamed milk and garnish with whipped cream and chocolate sprinkles if requested by the customer. Hot chocolate. Prepare some latte style steamed milk first, add a small portion to the cup with the chocolate powder and stir together completely. Fill the remainder of the cup with steamed milk and garnish with marshmallows or whipped cream if requested by the customer. Long black. The long black is a little different to the milk coffees. Use a double ristretto, that is two 15ml shots for a small cup, two standard shots for the regular and three standard shots for the large. Pour the espresso shots straight into the cup and add hot water from a hot tap down the side of the cup so that you don't break up the crema. Be careful not to overfill the cup as this coffee will be extremely hot and can easily spill. Customers often have different preferences to the way their coffee is made. For strong coffee requests, add a shot of espresso. For weak coffee requests, subtract a shot of espresso. In the case of a small coffee, which only has one shot, use a single ristretto instead. Another common request is for decaffeinated coffee. Our decaf coffees are processed using the Swiss water method, which is completely chemical free. Sticking to a firm cleaning and maintenance program will help you keep your machine and grinder producing top quality espresso and reduce potential equipment breakdowns. Identifying equipment problems early on is the best way to avoid urgent machine technician call-outs. Understand the equipment you work with and try troubleshooting problems over the phone before booking a service call. Regular espresso machine servicing is as easy as booking your car in for its 10,000 km service, and just as important. On each service, the technician will assess the overall functions of the espresso machine and replace any necessary parts, for example, seals, shower screens, water filters, and grinder blades. Regular servicing should occur every 600 kg of coffee used. The cleaning equipment you will be using includes a blind filter, a gasket brush, espresso machine cleaning powder, a container for soaking equipment, sanitizer and cleaning cloths, and a tub of warm soapy water. Throughout the day, clean and sanitize spoons, spatulas, milk jugs, shot glasses, and cloths, and refresh the ice in the utensil jug every half hour. Back flushing uses the machine's pressure to dislodge coffee particles from the group head, screen and seals. Back flushing should be carried out at regular intervals throughout the day. Every kilo of coffee is a good reminder. Replace the regular filter basket with a blind filter and activate the group. First, allow the water to run over the seal and then lock the group handle into the group head, turning the pump on for 5 seconds and off for 5 seconds. 
repeat several times. Give the grip handles and filters a quick scrub to remove any buildup. Replace the regular filter basket and season the group head with a shot of coffee before producing coffee for customers on this group. At the close of business, follow this back flushing procedure again, this time using a half teaspoon of espresso machine cleaning powder. Repeat until the powder has completely dissolved. Empty the blind filter and back flush again until the water is completely clear. Scrub the group seal with a small gasket brush to remove any coffee buildup. Once back flushing is complete, remove the drip tray and wash with warm, soapy water. Separate the filters from the group handles and soak in a container of hot water with one teaspoon of espresso machine cleaning powder. Let these soak for 10 to 15 minutes and scrub with a non-metal scourer to remove any hardened coffee oils. Every two weeks, Remove the shower screen from the group head and soak these with the group handles and filters. Steam ones should be wiped and cleaned routinely throughout the day, so cleaning it closed should be minimal. Caked on milk can be removed by wrapping a sanitised cloth around the wand and turning the steam on for a few seconds. Move your hands away from the steam wand while you do this as the heat will build quickly. After five minutes, the milk will soften and will wipe off. Abrasive materials should not be used on the espresso machine, nor should the steaming ones be submerged or soaked. After reassembling the espresso machine, pour a small amount of hot water through the drip tray to clear any blockages. Using sanitizer, wipe any coffee or milk from the espresso machine. Towards the end of service, close the gate on the hopper and grind any residual coffee between the hopper and the dosing chamber. Once the store is closed, empty any remaining ground coffee from the dosing chamber with a brush. Empty beans from the hopper into a clean, airtight container to prevent them from staling overnight. Wash the bean hopper with warm, soapy water and rinse. Make sure the hopper is completely dry before placing it back on the grinder. Using sanitizer, clean the outside of the grinder, knock box and surrounding benches. Thanks for joining us for a prepare and serve espresso coffee. Remember, making good coffee takes dedication, passion and practice. So make sure you practice the skills you've learnt in this program to master the art of espresso.